for coming. Thanks for being on time. We're going to start in two minutes. Um, there is a sign-in sheet going around. I think Tiana has... Nope, Tiana doesn't have it. Oh, the girlies have it. Okay. Hey, how's it going? Okay, so it's going around, so just sign in legibly, please. Uh, when it gets to you, it's just a little clipboard. If you are a grade leader, if you're a station leader, um, in the office, hmm, come and see me for a binder. Yeah, I have a binder. Uh, yes, please. Okay, everyone. Hello, 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 hello. Okay, hi everyone. Let's let's gather ourselves together, and we will start so that I can get you home, because we know how much fun all this is. Yeah, you're a veteran, aren't you? There you go. All right. So uh, let me start by praying and then we'll get to it. All right. Dear Jesus, thank you for today. Um, thank you that 
we get to partner with you to put on Kid Camp and um, introduce you, Jesus, to kids of this community. We pray, Jesus, even now, that you would, your Holy Spirit would go before us, uh, preparing the way for families to come that need to hear about you. Families that need their lives transformed because of you. And we pray, dear Jesus, that you would do that this year. And we also pray for salvations, that many people would come to know you because of Kid Camp this year. And now we just pray that you would be with us as we go through this material. Help us to understand, to learn, and to know. And then, Jesus, I pray that you would again go before us as we... Um, uh, put our feet to the ground during Kid Camp Week. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. All right. Here we go. Okay, if you haven't figured it out, space is our theme this year. Stellar. All right. You want to be the happy clicker until we switch? <laughs> <No>. <laughs> Okay, so uh, we're just going to show you kind of like the agenda or, how, or how, the process of what we're going to go over. So we're going to review the overview chart. Um, we're going to look at the daily schedule and the morning snapshot. We're going to look at the Bible buddies and points and stories and verses. That's all specific to this year. We're going to look at theme days and snack menu, facility map. Uh, oh, no, sorry. I don't know what I'm doing. I thought we had an agenda thingy. Okay, forget it. Okay, so <laughs> I just came off of Plan to Protect, okay? Okay, so if you flip to your first um, sheet with the world. Before we start the first sheet, if you have never done Kid Camp before, you're going to have questions. We're going to go through all the slides and all the sheets and then do questions. So if you have questions, there's pens in the seat pocket in front of you. Write down your question as we go, and then at the end, we'll do a Q&A session. Okay? All right. Okay. So, uh, the second page that has Shine Jesus Light, it has your, oh, thank you, the overview sheet. Um, so, that basically gives you an idea of uh, the days, day one to five, who the characters are, what the Bible points are. Uh, what the Bible stories are and the Bible verses. And today, I got to put this down. The action is shine Jesus light. Everyone do it. Shine Jesus light. That's the action. That's it. That's it. It's very simple. Shine Jesus light. We're going to do that in lots of songs too. <laughs> um, the next, next, next. Okay. Who has not put their name on the sign in sheet? All right. Thank you. Who, what, what is your only job? <laughs> no. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and write your name on the attendance sheet. Okay. Make sure that before you go, your name is on that attendance sheet, please. It's really important. All right. So uh, here is the schedule for the morning. This is what Monday to Friday is going to look like. We start at nine with the kids and end at noon with dismissal. Take a look at the schedule. If you haven't been part of Kid Camp before and you haven't read the schedule, you may have questions. So if you have questions about how the schedule works or who is where and when you are there, especially if you are a grade leader and you have to lead children from one station to the next, um, then make a note of it, and we'll, we'll go in detail with you at the end. All right. So the morning looks like... <laughs> you had one job, Nick. I'm not, I'm not a happy clicker. <laughs> <Okay. laughs> uh, so our morning looks like uh, coming to Let's Touch Base here in the sanctuary. That means that all of our workers, except for nursery and registration and office... All of our workers are going to meet here. Okay, thank you. Uh, um, and it's really important that you guys attend because we're going to go over anything new um, that's necessary for you to know because we tweak things as we go. 
And um, we're going to pray together, which is really important. And we have Donna joining us this year again to pray in the mornings before awesome. Kid Camp starts. So it's really important that you make your way here, and that's before opening session. Then we have all the kids. We all start opening session. Then we do our stations. That's the middle of the schedule. And then we do our closing session with all the kids. And then we do our alphabet dismissal and our assigned tasks. And what the assigned tasks are, are um, we all take turns doing little janitorial jobs so that the place is clean and ready to go for the next morning. And that takes the pressure off of our janitors here at the church so that they're not doing it all. And um, uh, we will be assigning those in the morning. So that's why you need to be around. So you will see those assigned tasks. Uh, you know every year how we have the conference room is like the staff room for all of the workers for Kid Camp. Uh, there's a whiteboard in there and all of the tasks will be on one side and then your name will be beside that task if you've been assigned that day. So this helps both uh, Rochelle and Tamara not have to spend hours upon hours being here after they've volunteered in the morning for kid camp to then clean for like four or five hours so they can come back again the next day, volunteer again, and then clean and volunteer and clean. So we are trying to prevent burnout. <laughs> and if we all take 15 minutes, it like takes hours off of their day. Yeah. Um, for opening session and closing session, if you have never been a part of kid camp before, girlies, are you with me? If you have never been a part of Kid Camp before, open session and closing, se closing session, organized chaos. Loud, <laughs> chaotic, fun, uh, totally an environment to have fun with your kids, to be loud and silly with your kids. That is the time at open and closing session to just give it your all with the kids. All right, and then we'd really like you to join us for lunch. So we have a group of people that are going to provide lunch for us, something simple so that we can feed your hungry tummies because when you're in ministry, you get hungry really fast. And um, so as soon as we done, we're done all our tasks, we can eat lunch together. And that's an opportunity for you to express to us anything that's of concern to you. Um, whether you're overwhelmed in your position, whether you've had a, you know, a rotten kid that's giving you all the problems, you can come to us with that. Um, if you're not understanding something, all those kind of things, come to us and that's an opportunity for you guys to talk to us about that. So we'd really love to love on you and give you lunch and give you an opportunity to talk to us. All right, so let's go through our days. Happy click. Happy click. Cosmo. Uh, when life feeds, sorry, when life feels, that's how old I am, people. Uh, when life feels dark, shine Jesus' light. Everyone practice. Shine Jesus' light. That's it. Day two. Day two. Uh, Ringo. When people don't get along, shine Jesus' light. Day three, Luna. When good things happen, shine Jesus' light. And soul. When people are sad, shine Jesus' light. And our last day, Hallie. Not Haley. I was like... Are we saying Hallie? Are we saying Haley? It's, it's Hallie. a double L. It's Hallie. It's Hallie's Comet. Yeah. Right? When people need help, shine Jesus' light. And then our preschoolers get Astro. Shine Jesus' light. <laughs> Don't you love Astro? Okay, so um, we have themed days here. If anyone, um, ha for our new people, Every day is um, a theme so that we can have extra fun above and beyond what we do at Kid Camp. So the first day is first day. That's a chaos all in itself. We don't need any additional craziness. We will 
off topic of theme day, but on topic of first day, the first day open session will always start five to seven minutes late because we will have a lineup of kids waiting to register and come in and sign in. It's okay. We're going to be five to seven minutes behind schedule on the first day. We know it. We plan for it. It's okay. It's a thing. It's a thing. Tuesday is bring a friend day. So what we're doing is we're allowing all the kids uh, here at Kid Camp that are registered to bring a friend for free and to visit and to get to know Kid Camp. And if they want to stay, they can stay for the rest of the week. And if not, they don't have to, but it's a bring a friend day. Wednesday's crazy hair day. That's where we get to be really silly and fun. So you can color your hair. You can do all kinds of creative things with it. You can wear a wig. You do yep. not have to do anything crazy with your hair. You can, you can totally, it depends on how much hair you have. That's if right. you don't have a lot of hair, <laughs> wear a wig. <laughs> if you have a lot of hair and you want to wear a wig, wear a wig. There you go. Uh, Thursday's backwards day. So, you know, kids do it often on their own anyway, but you know, wear clothes backwards. And Friday is silly sunglasses day. This year we are not doing uh for the first time in a long time we are not doing a food bank drive we are Bef go ahead before you go <gasps> we're not doing food bank it's okay we're partnering with laura at the gibbons community or gibbons family resource center and because there's other food drives right now in town and in bonacord this month they've said let's do something in december and let's do toilet paper because the food bank can only give each person who comes in two rolls of toilet paper per month. Yeah, let that set in. Per month, two rolls. Back to COVID days. One sheet. <laughs> so um, they're in need and they've asked for help. And they've asked Kid Camp to help them. And so what we're going to do is instead of doing our food bank drive like we normally do, we're going to ask for like Costco size, Walmart size, cases of toilet paper. We're going to do something really fun. As we, gonna, yeah, yeah, as we collect the toilet paper, we're going to build a spaceship. See the picture you're, there? You're going to build one over try there? And, try so and make a spaceship. Yeah. So the spaceship will be in here the ever evolving spaceship will be in here and as we collect the toilet paper the kids will be able to see us building the spaceship yeah cool okay uh snack menu this is this is up for a couple reasons the main reason is because uh and this is this is new to k camp this year we are not catering to any uh dietary, dietary needs so we're just making what's on our snack menu. We're not doing gluten-free. We're not doing dairy, no dairy. Um, we're just making it. And if anyone has any intolerances, they uh, will need to provide their own snack. We just, we just got to the point where it was just, we, we were feeling unsafe um, that we weren't gonna provide, that we were gonna make a mistake or cause something that we don't wanna cause. So. We have this online um, so that the parents who are, do have kids with special needs or dietary needs can um, copy. So it kind of looks like their snack look, looks like everyone else's snack. It's on Facebook. So if, you if you're talking Kid Camp to other parents in the community, uh, the snack menu is on the Facebook Kid Camp page and it's also on the church website page. Yes, Tanya? <laughs> Okay. Does it say seasonal fruit? No. It doesn't say seasonal fruit. Okay, we'll, we'll fix it. Yeah. Do you want to leave me a note? Because, you know, I'll say yes right now and tomorrow morning it'll be gone. Okay. <laughs> um, okay, so the question was for video purposes. Uh, on, I think it's Facebook, it doesn't say seasonal fruit for Friday, but we're going to change that to say seasonal fruit. There are some strawberry allergies out there, um, stuff like that. So leaders, especially grade leaders, the deal is, if kids are bringing their own snack, they're going to bring it in. That bag is going to be labeled. It's going to go to Tanya in the kitchen. She has a schedule. She knows when every child is at snack. And at the appropriate time, she'll bring that bag out 
for that child to have their own snack that was provided by their family at snack time with all the rest of the kids. Okay. All right. So um, I made an addition to our map because you we're going to be talking about emergency situations. Yes. So um, this is a map of the church. Um, I don't know if you can understand that or not, but um, it, it's, it's location for the thing on the right, the rectangle on the right is the lower level. The building on the left is our main level here. And that's where all of uh, the location of all of our things are going to happen. Um, the green location dots, those are our muster points. The, a muster point is where you meet in, when you're evacuating the building. We don't just run like crazy ants and go like a thousand different ways and run home. That is not what we do. We run with our kids and our attendance sheets and we run to the muster points and we gather there at the muster points. That is um, the corner of the um, garage, okay? And at the top of our property, at our neighbor's fence, so where the fence and the sidewalk and the street and our parking lot all meet. I kind of where that, ho that uh, Halloween guy is. Yeah, I think Casper's yeah. still there. He'll meet with you. Yeah, so yeah. we're going to meet there. So that there's two po points there to meet. And that is for when we evacuate the building. The red dots you can see on the screen, those are where we are going to shelter in place in case of any danger coming onto our property, like extreme weather or um, danger, like a dangerous person on premises. So um, the reason why I pointed those out are because those are our safest places, especially for extreme weather, because those are underground and there's no windows, no outside windows accessed by the, to those rooms. So in case, we'll, we'll address this later on, but in case, um, you are told that we need to shelter in place. Everyone, including outside people, will make their way downstairs to one of those rooms and you will huddle together close to an outside wall. All right? If you are outside and you get the call to shelter in place, so that means coming into the building, you do not need to come all the way around and come through the foyer and then go down the stairs. It's an emergency. The preschoolers will already have moved to their spot by the time you guys get in here. So just come through the walkout basement doors and go to your spot. All right, so next, there's some sheets that are... Um, I think in your binder that are, I think there's three or four sheets there. Um, skip those until you see the next screen that's, or next page that's on the screen. Behavioral issues. These previous pages are all helps for you that are listed on the screen. So you can go through that later. But we want to help you. Um, we're not going to throw you to the wolves. So we want to help you when it comes with dealing with behavioral issues. Um, and I am not an expert by any stretch of the imagination, but we're going to kind of work through some things. So there's many reasons why a child is misbehaving or causing issues in your group. One could be hunger. Uh, you know yourself how you feel when you're hungry. <laughs> you're impatient, you're starving, you want to eat, and you probably get angry. You just need a Snickers. Just eat a Snickers, right? Or a Mars bar. <laughs> Which one is it? Mars or Snickers? I think Snickers, it's Snickers, yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, so uh, if you suspect, I don't want you to abuse this because I don't want 10 uh, holes in their legs to come to the kitchen and say, I'm hungry. That is not for you. It's for the kids. So the kids, if they're hungry and you suspect that they're just, they just need more food, to kind of get their blood sugar up and, and make, get them to a happier place. Um, you can talk to Tanya. Tanya, can you wave your hands, please? There's Tanya. She's the leader of the kitchen. And you can just say, hey, I think this kiddo just needs a granola bar or an apple or something. She'll, she will always have something available to hand that child to get them going again. Uh, if a kid has um, poor sleep that night before, or a poor schedule in general, that child will be grumpy and miserable. If they're unwell, 
i.e. they woke up that day and all of a sudden they're developing a headache or they're developing a cold or whatever, they're not going to feel well, that is when you tell your leader and or you tell us to and we'll call the parents and have the parents come get that child because an unwell child shouldn't be here. If they're feeling ill, um, they just shouldn't be here. Um, overstimulation. We have a lot of kids that find kid camp overstimulating. We and have a lot of adults that find yes. kid camp overstimulating. Hello, <laughs> it's the truth. Okay, so um, uh, overstimulation. Sometimes all they need is a break, and um, and a lot. We're doing a lot better nowadays at giving kids the language or the vocabulary for them to say, "I just need a break." And we have lots of ways to do that. Often we just bring them into the office and let them sit in one of the quiet offices with a book or whatever. And, and sometimes that's all it takes. But we need to recognize that in our kids. Um, they could, there could be stress at home for a number of reasons. Home life can cause bad behavioral issues. So um, we're not gonna ask leading questions, but let's just kind of be observant. Um, obviously abuse, if there's abuse happening, that could cause a child to be misbehaving. And um, that's where we go back to our plan protect, which is reporting the abuse, or at least uh, talking to your leader or me um, and Cassandra and Manik about what you're seeing, okay? Um, then we also have a few things to help you. One are those uh, a couple few sheets there that are in front. I also bought a couple of cheap uh, ear earmuffs or sound protector things um, for the kids that just find the the noise too loud. But again, I don't want you to over. I don't want you to um, give it to a kid who's misbehaving and then have that be their thing for the whole. Because then you'll be chained to that earmuff for the whole week. Just be observant. So there's also diagnosed disorders um, oh, where yeah, I you could, it, I won't say that the child may be acting out. I won't say that the child may be misbehaving. It, it's just part of their condition, part of their diagnosis. Uh, they may have autism, but they're high functioning and they just need to, or Tourette's, and they just need to let something out, right? So it's okay if you have a child that's, doing the wing dance kind of thing, it's fine. If they need to yell, that's fine. Um, you may just say, do you need to go for a walk? Do you need some quiet time? Do you need whatever? Um, but you will know that information, leaders, grade leaders in particular, because that information is going to be on the sheet that you will get from registration each day for who is in your group. Okay, so you'll know that information. Please don't share that information with everyone. That is for your eyes. It's confidential. Um, think of it as a parent. Would you want everyone in this room to know what your specific child's uh, special needs or requirements are for each day, right? You wouldn't want that. So those are confidential and those are just for your leader's eyes. If you need to share that with your helpers because you need your helper to come alongside a certain child and be that child's buddy for the day, that's fine. But just um, just be careful with that information. It's, it's part of who that child is and it's not bad, it's just there, right? So we'll have fidgets as well. They're like a, a little mesh tube with a, um, a marble inside. So if a kid just needs to keep their fingers busy to listen, then we have one of those. We have the pages, like I said uh, in before, and um, all that stuff will help you, give you some tools in your tool belt. And last but not least, we have the principal's office. We are the bad guys. <laughs> we can be the bad guys. Um, so if, if you're at your wit's end and you're getting overwhelmed, and especially if that child is taking all of your attention as a leader away from the rest of the group, now it's time to get us involved. It is not your responsibility to die on the hill of making that kid okay. That's not what we're here for.
you're going to have a really long, stressful day if yeah. you try to take it on all by yourself. Yeah. So we are giving you permission that if you're overwhelmed with that child and everything that you've tried is not working, come to us and literally send the kid to us. Like, take them by the hand, come to us in the office and tell us what's going on and then let us deal with it. Often, that again, that child just needs a break or they need food and we'll assess the issue and then we'll try and integrate that child back into the class uh, wherever they are at the moment. Um, and we might make a decision to call mom and dad, mm -hmm. but that's for us to do. There are times as well where certain conditions may not be diagnosed. Um, and so there might not be any behavioral concerns or issues or medical concerns or issues that are on a registration form. But if you notice within the first like hour of kid camp, you know, this kid is really high needs and I don't know that we can do this without another person or without a buddy for this child, you need to tell us right away because that day is going to be really long for you, really stressful, and we will do our very best to make sure that we have somebody for you for that child. Okay. This is information for our grade group leaders. Um, we've seen in the past where um, kids often would like to save the rest of their snack that they've been given for that, but they haven't finished it. You are absolutely please keep the snack for the kid, but here's the rule. You'll have a Sharpie in your bag so you can write on the Ziploc yeah. bag with the kid's name in it. The rule is no more eating after snack. It can go home with the kid, but no more eating. We've found popcorn shrapnel and pretzels and whatever else uh, Tanya fed them that day all over the church. And that's not fair to us. And it's not fair to the, the uh, station leader and everything else. So they eat only at snack time. When snack time is done, the leftover snacks are labeled and put in your bag that you're carrying, group leaders. And then at the end of the day, and only at dismissal, you can give that snack back to the kid and the kid can take that home. Okay? Uh, same with gadgets. So uh, at Imagination Station, which is one of the rotating stations, they're going to get a gadget every day. And the kids are going to want to play with them. But after Imagination Station they're not going to be playing with them anymore. They're going to go in the group leader's bag. And then at the end of the day, it can go back to the kid to take home. Now, there are some, they're going to be absolutely identical. It doesn't matter which one goes to which kid. It's going to all be the same. Some will be a little bit more specific to the kid if they have to, if they end up decorating it or whatever. So if, if, if it's one of those um, gadgets that, doesn't need to be labeled with an individual kid, then don't bother. Just put them, make sure you have enough for all the kids, put them in your bag, and then hand them out at the end of the morning. Um, and also, please get in the practice, great group leaders, of counting heads. So once morning session is done, check your, check your um, attendance sheet, make sure you know how many kids you have, and then when you go to the next station, you're going to count again. And when you go to the next station, you're going to count again. And that good practice, best practice, will help us figure out if we have a runner. <laughs> and every year, we have a runner. And they're not trying to be bad, usually. Although we've had some ones that are awfully malicious. <laughs> um, uh, generally, it's a younger kid, like kindergarten, kindergarten grade one, and they just decided, hey, I don't want to be here anymore, Squirrel. or, or, or I want to go to I want to go to the bathroom, but they don't tell anyone. The independent ones are the problem makers. No, I'm just <laughs> kidding. So they just, without thinking about it, they just say I need to go here, and they just decide to walk off. Meanwhile, no one has noticed, and we haven't been counting heads. Then that's a problem because now we don't know when that child is left, and where the child is left. So um, if we practice counting at each station, we will have a very good timeline on that. Before you move to the next one, um, in that best practices vein, um, you'll notice that I took, you probably won't because you didn't go down that hallway, I took the volunteer sign-up sheets down because I needed to play the puzzle 
and fit everybody in where uh, we had holes. So our registration slash floater team, uh, you've all been assigned a spot at this point in time because I had holes and uh, needed to fill them. So um, come and see me if you wanna know where you are at and I can let you know. Also this year we have several uh, brand new helpers. They're just going into grade seven and they've never helped at kid camp before. So my leaders and my helpers that have been here before, it is our job to lead, guide, and mentor these new helpers so that next year they can do the same for the new helpers that are coming in. So what we want to do is we want to build into these kids who are helping. We want to build into their leadership goals, into their leadership um, uh, abilities, and we want to set them up for success, okay? So I want you to invest some time and not just say, don't just say, I need you to help that kid. They're going to stand there and go, how do I help them? What do I help them with? What help do they need? I need you to be specific. Okay, so say that child is um, having an issue with X, Y, or Z. I want you to come alongside. I want you to guide. I want you to be very specific so that they know exactly what they need to do. And by the next day, they'll be like, oh, I did that yesterday. I know I can do that again today. And they'll just automatically step into that kind of thing, okay? So we want to build these kids up. We want to uh, make this a good year for them and not like, not a year where they go, well, that's the last time I'm doing that. That was terrible. So, <laughs> okay. Um, again, if you have questions about where you're at or anything like that, come and ask. We will let you know. All right. So, keeping campers safe. There are certain things that we do have, uh, procedures we put in place, things that we've um, made just for kid camp so that we can be our, do the very best we can to keep everyone safe and accounted for. Um, part of that is plan to protect, which is what we did previous to this training session. Um, but if you're, if you're a community person or someone that um, hasn't had a chance to plan and protect, that's okay. We'll, we'll um, go over what's needed. So, uh, just a quick reminder what proper displays of affection are. That is anything that you'd be willing to do in front of that kid's parents. Side hugs, pats, um, uh, holding their hands. There's all kinds of positive, um, encouraging, appropriate touch that you can do and displays of affection that you can do in order to encourage that child and love on that child. Um, one thing that we're going to ask you not to do is allow kids to sit on your lap directly, especially the um, older elementary kids. Um, toddlers and preschoolers, yes, that's, that's okay because that age is, um, they need that. Um, but when we're talking about elementary kids, um, those kids um, don't need to be sitting on your lap or climbing on you, boys. Everyone, boys, no. No climbing. The kids really like to climb on boys in particular. Yeah. And you know what? You do not need to let that happen. I'm asking you to not let that happen. Because yeah. A, A, you're going to get hurt. Or B, one of the kids is going to get hurt. And C, then they think that they don't have to listen to you because you're just... A climbing you're apparatus. You're a jungle gym, right? Yeah. You don't have... It, it, it causes you to lose a little bit of the authority figure that you are to them when they think you're a jungle gym. And of course we can play the bad guys too. So yeah. um, if you have to just say, you better watch it because Mrs. Kozak is watching you. <laughs> Always watching. <laughs> yeah. I'm watching you. Yeah. That's awesome. Okay, so new this year, we've, we, are, uh, we are just purchased and waiting for them to arrive. We've got two-way radios this year. And that's going to help us with many things, one in which is the emergency broadcasting, because we do not have a PA system here in the church. So there's no way for us in an emergency to tell everyone at the same time that there's an emergency. We just don't have it. So um, we have two-way radios now. Um, only um, the people that we feel will be responsible with them will get one. And there'll be one in um, kind of wherever the kids are, so, we will, so that we can communicate. Um, so again, 
where I've, I've already covered it, but I'll say it again. If it's an evacuation emergency, we go to the garage. muster points at the garage or the fence. Jasper. The fence, the corner Casper. fence. Casper, yes. And then um, if it's shelter in place, we go downstairs. Yep. Okay. Okay, so downstairs, those rooms that are windowless. Um, They're not windowless. They're all windows. Oh, like, sorry, the doors are windows. Yes. So the rooms that the kids will be going into, you will be going into with the kids. Um, there's no outside access to those rooms, right? So the youth room is one of the rooms. The G-Force room is a second room. And the quiet reading room is a third room. Preschoolers only will go to the quiet reading room. Okay? It's close to the preschool room. It's small, they're small, we can fit them all in there. <laughs> There's toys to keep them quietly busy kind of thing or books. So that's kind of the designation they'll be. Are we giving them designation rooms tonight? So um, that they know where to go if it happens? I mean, the aim is for uh, Ks and Ones um, to go to the youth room because there's more of them usually. Ks and Ones to the youth room. Mm -hmm. And then uh, twos and threes to the G-Force room, preschool to the quiet room. Yep. And just a reminder, if you have time, if it's a, if it's a shelter in place, um, please, if, if you have time, you lock the doors, you cover the windows, because each door downstairs has a window. Mm -hmm. So if there's a dangerous person on the premises, you want to block their vision into the room. So try and cover the windows, and then if you, if you have time and if it's safe, try and barricade the doors as well with the furniture that's in the room. So our fours, fives, and sixes could potentially be in the backyard, in the back 40, or they could be off campus doing a um, community helping project kind of thing. If they are on premises and they're in the back 40, they are also going to come downstairs and we are going to fit them into the youth room because it is the biggest room and um, they will fit in there. Uh, your other option is the uh, bathroom that, yeah. and the bathrooms that are down there as well. Those doors don't lock. That is a last option. Okay. They don't lock. All right. Let's move on to first aid. So um, we have uh, Mrs. New, can you wave your hands? Tiana is our nurse this year, and she'll be in the office just like we've had in the past. So if you have a boo-boo, um, <laughs> then it comes to, oh, see, it rhymes. If you have a boo-boo, go see Mrs. New. Isn't that <laughs> awesome? I love that. All right, so um, she'll be stationed there. She'll have all the Band-Aids and, uh, you know, all the best owie stuff. And she'll take care of it. Um, again, new this year uh, is we've been kind of vacillating over the years about what to do with EpiPens and puffers. So this year, boys, uh, we have brightly colored fanny packs. They are beautiful. They're beautiful. <laughs> and so the deal is, is if a child has an EpiPen or a puffer, it'll stay on their body. And it'll be labeled with their name. They will hand it in every day, pick it up every day, and they'll wear it every day. And um, it can be worn across their body because it's like an adult size, so it might be able to fit across their body or around their waist. And it'll just stay on their person so that if there's an emergency, the medication is right on them, not anywhere else. So leaders, when it comes to first aid, this happens every year. Leader is doing something, loses, I don't know, a toenail. We'll just say that. Gets a cut. Let's, let, let's do something easier. Gets a cut. And they come into the office because they're bleeding and they're like, I just need a Band-Aid. Well, Mrs. New has to see you because it's part of kid camp policy. She has to take a look. She has to put the Band-Aid on. She has to do all that. She has to fill out the incident report because we need to keep track of absolutely everything. So as much as I would love to just give you a Band-Aid and say, here you go. 
we have to make sure all of that is taken care of, okay? So you can come in and you can whine to me. You can even like stomp your foot and so or actually it's going to be Sarah Kugler. Jonathan Sanders. <laughs> <laughs> and she's going to say, nope, I'm not giving you a Band-Aid. You have to go see Mrs. New, okay? All right. And Sarah's going to put on her mean voice when she says it. <laughs> She's right. laughing. She's like, yeah, right. Here's the, new, here's the new word. You know, when we were growing up, we always said, don't come crying to me for the, our kids that, you know, were being I'm gonna stupid. I'm going to give you a reason to cry. Yeah, all right. You're, you're, okay. So the new, the new phrase is, if you're going to be stupid, you better be tough. That's the new one. If you're going to be stupid, you better be tough. All right. Okay. So let's go over um, our kind of procedures for signing in and signing out. Charlotte, did you have a question? No? Okay. okay. Uh, we don't take questions during it. <laughs> take questions after. All right. Okay. So for sign in, um, once a, this is really important because we've had a problem with this in the past. And that includes uh, you guys' children's. Okay. So... Once a child is signed in and they have a security tag, wristband, wristband, they come through those doors, they are now officially in here. They cannot go out and in and out and in. Because once they have that security band, they are our responsibility. And if they leave the sanctuary, they are out of our sight. Okay? So if you have your own child and you want, you're okay with them falling around, um, uh, you know, nipping at your heels, that's fine. But that's at your own risk. Okay? I hope everyone understands that. But if your own child is following you around, we may have, and <laughs> we lovingly call this person, whoever it's going to be, the bouncer, um, who will stand at the sanctuary doors. And as a child is about to leave... They will stop that child because that child, once signed in and has a wristband, is not allowed to leave the sanctuary. So you, as a parent, may get stopped every time you go out with your child saying, that child can't leave. So just so you know, that's, uh, that is also policy so that we can keep an eye on all of our kids and yep. keep track of them. Want to do dismissal? Uh, dismissal. Okay. <laughs> this is a fun one. So those wristbands come with a numbered tag that's attached to the wristband that it will be on that child's wrist the whole time the wristband is there. As each family registers or signs in each day, a copy of that wrist, uh, wristband number will be given to the parent or caregiver, could be a day home provider, and they will have to have that with them when they come back to pick up said child. If that stub is lost, there's procedures. <laughs> no, it's, it's like Chuck E. Cheese. No number, no kid. You do not get that child unless or until all of the steps have been put in place. So as a leader who's helping in our sign out dismissal corrals, if somebody comes up to you and says, I don't have the number, you just send them to the office. And either uh, Mrs. Kugler, Sarah, or myself, or Kelly will take care of it. So, and to be perfectly honest, it's not a pain-free situation. We don't ever want them to lose their tags again because it creates this whole <laughs> dramatic process of making sure they can come and pick up their child. So yeah, there's just, there's, yeah, photo ID must be produced. We have to make sure that we check that that person is on the pickup list for that child, which means we got to grab the binder and we got to make sure their name is on the list. So it's um, a process. We have, we have an easy fix for that. So if you are, um, if you have to pass your tag on to someone else or like between your, your spouse and yourself, like one's dropping off and the other one's picking up or vice versa, or if you've got an auntie or an uncle or a grandpa, take a picture of your security tag, your half, 
Mm -hmm. Take a picture of it, and then you can text it to anyone who needs to have it to pick up your kid, and that person can show it. And, it, and that's good enough. If we see that that tag number matches the number on the kid, it's okay. All right? What so, can also happen is, um, so each day all those tags will get stapled to uh, the handout that gets, gets given to the parent. That handout with a sticky note of who's gonna be picking it up can be left in the office for, cause mom dropped off. If dad's picking up, dad can come to the office, pick up the tags, then come sign out their kids kind of thing. So we do have processes in place to make it easier for the parents or caregivers. But if you lose your tag, it's, it's a lengthy process, but we make sure that, um, we make sure that the kids are safe. Something oh, died. Now I'm gonna be a happy clicker. Okay. Um, so, just to Too let far? you know, Too far? <laughs> just oh. let you know, um, for okay. those who, don't, who haven't been here before, um, we allow in the morning for parents to drop their kids off into the sanctuary to walk them in, but they will be labeled by the bouncer with a bright, bright colored tag that says that they're a visitor. No child is supposed to um, go with that person unless it's their own child. Mm -hmm. um, they're not responsible for anyone. They're just there often just to drop the child off and make them feel safe, and then they leave. So um, if you see someone that is not labeled, either they don't have a kid camp shirt or they don't have a visitor tag, then you need to question them. Who are you and what are you doing here? So we are tasked with making sure that... Well, I'm going to guess what, 85% of the kids who come here out of the 120, 150 kids are community kids. And we are tasked with making sure that they are safe while they are here. If somebody does not have a tag, if that means that they're in here without our knowledge, we don't know who they are. We don't know what their intent is when they come in here. So we need to make sure that we're using our eyes and we are questioning people as they come in. Uh, just going to go back to dismissal for a second. If... A parent needs to pick up a child early from kid camp, that's never a problem. But again, there's a process. The parent can't just come to you at games outside and say, okay, I'm taking little Susie, let's go. We don't know that Susie's gone because Susie's not signed out. So that parent needs to come to the office where we have the sign out sheet. A helper will go get Susie from games, bring Susie to the office where the parent is, put them together, make sure the wristband and the number match, and then we give Susie to said parent, and then they can go, okay? So if a parent approaches you and says, I gotta go, it's a hur I'm in a hurry, I'm sorry, your hurry does not supersede making sure that that child is safe. We need to know that that child is going home with the correct person. And just because they have a tag doesn't mean that tag number is going to match Susie's wristband. They could have found that tag in the parking lot and decided to come and pick up a child that isn't theirs. So we need to make sure that we follow all protocols. Do not let an adult bully you into giving you their child. I will be the bad person any day of the week. That is not allowed because we need to keep these kids safe. Okay, here we go. Best, our best accumulated wisdom. <laughs> Prepare for kid camp tips. Sleep. Are you ready? Sleep, lots of sleep. It is really wise <laughs> for you to start your school schedule now. Sleep, As lots in of sleep. Whatever time you wake up usually for school, your, your kids for school, whatever time you wake up for school yourself, that is the time that you should start waking up starting tomorrow. Because you need to condition yourself back into routine. And it'll be way easier on you if you start now than if you start Monday morning at kid camp. That's true. Trust me. And also going to bed at the same, at school hours time. Go, wake up early, go to bed early. Don't overbook yourself as the next one. Try not to put a lot of parties and gatherings and other such that fill up your week between now and kid camp and during kid camp. 
don't fill up your schedule. You're just doing, you're not doing yourself any favors. You're just going to exhaust yourself. And when you get exhausted, what happens? You get sick. You get sick. And if there's anywhere that you need to be prepared and healthy, it's kid camp. Because kid camp is the first large gathering of children before school. <laughs> so the germs will be flying everywhere. Shares is, <laughs> yes, sharing is caring. And they like to share yeah. and care a lot. So, um, <laughs> so I would really uh, encourage you to govern yourself for the next two or three weeks. All right. Two or three weeks. Well, two, we two. only have 12 sleeps. Ah, 12 sleeps. See? Okay. Yeah. 12 sleeps. 12 sleeps. Uh, of course, we want you to complete the training. So I'm talking to the people that are watching online. Make sure that all your training is completed. All your forms are filled out. And, um, uh, and go through your binder information. We want you to listen to the songs. Manik's been playing the CD every day. Every day. Do you know what I heard from the back today when I when I pressed play <laughs> on the playlist again and all I heard was oh, not again, not again. <laughs> so anyway, if you get it ingrained in your brain, it'll be way easier to learn it during the week, and yes. you'll be able to help the kids sing it and so forth. Um, Plan for starting now. Start planning for the theme days for the different, like the hair and the sunglasses. Buy your wigs. Yep. Get your hair Go color. Go shopping. Do whatever you get need. Get your sunglasses. Hair glitter. I don't Ooh, know. Whatever glitter. it is that you're well, putting. I don't know. Tamara and Rochelle, do we want a lot of glitter in the no, building? No, no glitter. <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> um, so and plan for if you have if you or your child has dietary needs plan for that ahead of schedule and also plan for our toilet paper uh donation so if you're out shopping grab grab a package if you can if you can afford it i think purex was on sale at uh walmart for the last little while it's there like i don't know like whatever you like want a big to do. discount like 12 or 15 dollars off It'll, what we're trying to say is if you start planning now this week It'll be way easier for you during Kid Camp Week, okay? Yes. And of course, most importantly, please start praying. Pray for yourself. Pray for your co-volunteers. Pray for us as leaders. Pray for the Holy Spirit to powerfully move among the children and through our Bible teacher, John, and through all the other station leaders. We want these children to know without a doubt who Jesus is and what he can do for them and pray for safety, pray for unity. There's lots of things you can pray for, but all these things we, we need to ask Jesus for it. Yeah. Um, make sure that you uh, pray for protection, pray oh for goodness. against illness, pray for protection against the enemy, having any, um, uh, influence over kid camp, whether it's to be the leaders or the kids. Um, pray that kids decide to accept Jesus for Christ. Jesus for Christ. Jesus as Lord. Oh my there goodness. Go. Um, <laughs> okay. Pray for the kids to take home Jesus to their families. Because the families, mom and dad, are going to be like, so what'd you do today? What'd you learn? Blah, blah, blah. Shine Jesus light. Right? And right? the kids are going to talk to their parents <laughs> about Jesus. So pray for those conversations. Okay. All right. So here is our best collected wisdom during Kid Camp Week tips. Okay. Again, shower. <laughs> Thank you. Right? Yes. Okay. So get up early. <laughs> but here's what you're going to do when you get up early. You're going to eat breakfast Woot. with protein. <laughs> not, not cereal. Oh, not what? toast. I like cereal. I want you to have protein with your breakfast. Why do, why? People, tell me why. Energy. Yes, thank you. Sustained energy. All right. It'll stick with you longer. It'll stick with you longer. Yes. Go to bed early. Why? Because you don't want to get sick. sick. And right. you know what? You're kind of going to be tired at the end of the day. It's going to bed early is you not going to be a you problem. You might want to take a nap. <laughs> okay. So uh, practice good hygiene. Please. Please. 
is. I don't want to smell armpits. I don't want to smell dirty underwear. I don't want to smell a shirt that hasn't been washed for five days. Please okay? wash your clothes. <laughs> Please wash your body. I'm Please gonna be in here every morning for open and every afternoon for closed session. I don't want to smell your armpits. I don't want to smell dirty underwear, and I don't want. You can ask your mom if she can do an extra load of laundry during the week of kid camp. It's okay. Now, uh, here's another very important thing. Everyone, listen. Please practice washing your hands often. Yes. Wash your hands before you put before you eat anything. Wash your hands when you go home. Wash your hands. That is your best protection against getting sick other than sleeping. Is it a question? Okay, extra sanitizer. So please, please practice. And also, if you feel uncomfortable, if you want to wear a face mask, absolutely wear a face mask. Okay? It's about your comfort, comfort level when it comes to uh, illness, mm -hmm. okay? So we've learned within the past few years that washing your hands really does help with the preventative measures against getting those colds. Everyone's going to get that back to school cold, but you might not get it the week of kid camp or the week after kid camp if you keep washing your hands, especially before you touch your face or put food in your mouth that you've just touched with your hands kind of thing, it makes a huge difference. We, every day, uh, on the list that's gonna be in the conference room, we will be sanitizing doorknobs and bathrooms and all of that kind of stuff too, uh, which we've done for years and years anyways, but it's just gonna help cut down on the germ level. I wanna encourage you to bring uh, creature comforts. And what I mean by that is, if you're a person that likes to have a water bottle with you, yeah, that is a creature comfort for, for us. For me, it is. <laughs> we, we need the personal fans. But if, you, if you're the kind of person that likes to have your water bottle with you, or you like your lemon in your water, or cold tea, or whatever, bring that with you. If you like to chew gum, uh, then bring your gum. If you need to have Kleenex with you all the time, like me, bring Kleenex. Uh, whatever it is that, that will make you endure the morning better, do it. Um, <laughs> We're going to ask you, so 8 o'clock, so if you're on registration team, you're in the office or you're in the nursery, I, I, not office, office, you need to come for 8 o'clock? Yeah, 8 o'clock. 8 o'clock, um, because you are the pre-people, so you have to come before everyone else, so if you need to arrive for 8, and then everyone else, 8.15, everyone say, 8.15. 8 okay. So, and the reason why you're coming at 8.15 is because you're going to come, you're going to park down the road as far as you can because we need to free up the street and the parking lot as best we can for all the traffic that's coming in in the morning. It's going to give you time to sign in your own kids if you have kids because you need to sign them in before you do your job. And then um, you have to go and get uh, your, whatever you need for the morning, your name tags and your binders from the locker room. And then you need to be in here for? Let's touch base. Yes, 8 at 8.30. Let's touch base at 8.30. Everyone say 8.30. 8.30. Okay. And we will start Let's Touch Base at 8.30 promptly because at uh, 8.45, we're going to have people lined up ready to sign their kids in, and those kids are going to be starting to come in here. So we need to be finished giving you all the details for the day, uh, any last minute changes, uh, praying over you and the kids, all of that kind of stuff has to be done before 8.15 so that we can get you ready to welcome those kids in uh, really well. So for those that have to be here for 8 o'clock, registration, office, and nursery, you're here that early. We're going to go at like 8.05, 8.07. We're going to meet in the nursery. We're going to pray. We're going to have let's touch base for you guys in the nursery. 8.05, 8.07 kind of thing. That gives me then time to get back in here for 8.30 after I answer 17 questions on the way over here um, to then do let's touch base with the big group in general. Okay. Um, if you're a parent with kids in kid camp, you're going to make sure that you have your security stub on you 
or given to your spouse or whoever else is going to be picking up your kids. Because even though you're a leader, if you lose your wristband stubs, guess what you have to do? Government ID. <laughs> Government ID. Yeah. Yeah. All right. So we're almost done, guys. Almost done. Okay. Here are our requests from you. Youth helpers. Who's a youth helper this year? Put up your hand. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much for you guys. Please. Yes, Marcus, you are. Marcus and everyone else who's a youth helper, please listen and follow your leader's instructions. That's me. That's your group leader. Please follow their instructions. They're not there to boss you around. They're there to encourage you and to train you and for you to help. And if you disobey them, you will be visiting us. All right. Um, cell phones. Is that the principal's office? Yes, the principal's office. <laughs> um, cell phones. Uh, I know everyone has their cell phone on them, especially parents. They want to have access to their children. But please do not check your phones. Like, don't pull it out and look at your phone unless it is an emergency. Um, because that sends a message to the people around you, including the kids. What is it telling you? Or them? They're not valuable. Yeah, that's right. You're not worth my time. I'm going to look at my phone. Yeah, I'm distracted. You're not important. Yeah. So um, as much as you possibly can govern yourself, please do not yeah. check your phones. And a lot, again, a lot of these kids are community kids, and we don't know what they're coming from at home, right? And so this might be a very loving environment for them and a, an environment where they actually uh, receive positive feedback and receive attention. And so we want to make sure it's positive attention. And so we don't want to send that message that they're not valuable and they're not worth it because we're on our phone looking at whatever. Okay. Uh, we have a history of writing on t-shirts. So um, we will have markers and things available for leaders and youth helpers to uh, draw pictures or write encouraging words on kids t-shirts. Um, but Here's the important point. Please do not be a distraction. Do not make marker writing, or I sh should say, like, writing with marker on the kid's t-shirt. Do not make that the most important thing you're doing at the moment. Please be aware of your surroundings. Do not be a distraction to others. And uh, um, please don't just randomly draw weird things on the shirts. It's about Jesus, mm -hmm. and it's about encouragement. So encouraging things about that child or a really cool picture, or, um, or a Bible verse, but nothing more than that, please. And a great time to do uh, the t-shirt writing would be open session, um, but... While we're waiting yeah, to start. Yeah, while we're waiting to start. So as, as long as you have, so each grade will have two leaders and two helpers. So I would say only one leader or one helper is allowed to write on somebody's t-shirt in the group for open or closing session because, or just open session while we're waiting, because you want to welcome all those other kids who are coming in. You want to mark them off on your um, registration list that you have to make sure that you have those kids that day. You want to make sure that you are paying attention to who's coming in, doing a head count all the time, doing all that kind of stuff, okay? And then snack. Snack is a good time, too. Uh, once the kids are yes. done eating or whatever, or you're done eating, you can, they can be eating. You can go behind them and do whatever. Definitely not Bible story. No. No drawing in Bible story. Okay? Oh, Mr. John will be like, no. No. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Uh, so follow-up yeah. letters. Again, if you're new here, we do follow-up letters. Um, it's a way to encourage our students after kid camp. And so um, this year I'm changing it up a bit. I'm going to provide a pre-written note um, for those that struggle with it, because I know some do. Um, so I'm going to pre-write a note. Then you can add the child's name and sign your name. And you can sign any personal note that you want on it, like, hey, loved your smile this week or whatever. Um, and it can be as simple as that. You can also add stickers or... Um, or draw a little picture, anything that you want to make it from you, 
that would be great. But it, it's not necessary this year because I will have that pre-written note. On the other hand, or and because, no, not and because, and <laughs> if you are the kind of person that really loves to do the personal notes, um, you are more than welcome to write the entire thing, personal note. You don't have to use mine. Um, but I just thought it would be a nice option for you guys this year. So that's grade leaders and preschool leaders you're, uh, and, um, and four, fives, and sixes. All the leaders, I'm asking them to write at least address every kid that they have in their group. Um, because after that, I will be getting group pictures printed. I put a printed picture of that kid's group in the envelope with the letter. And I also throw in, um, I think I have glow-in-the-dark tattoos this year Ooh. to put in their thing. So much fun, right? So, um, so I, I stuff the envelope with fun things, and then I send it to them um, usually before Christmas, around Thanksgiving-ish is what I aim for. So, um, so it's really important to have that put together. So I'm asking you um, as leaders to start noticing and making a mental note, like actually write yourself a little note when you're with your kids. If you notice something about a child, whether they have a great smile or they have a really cute laugh or they're really friendly with all the kids, like something that you can encourage them with, mark that down so that when, at the moment that you're writing the letters at the end of the week, you can actually remember it and write it down on their note, uh, on their little follow-up letter. Mm -hmm. So um, if you have any questions about that, please ask me, but it's, it's really, I think it's, it's secondary to Kid Camp Week because it reminds them of Kid Camp Week. So it's really good. Okay. So please make sure that you have those letters, which will be provided for you. They're not in your binders yet, but they will be in your bins in the conference room for the Monday morning. So you can slide them in your binders. Um, make sure that you have those letters in to the office either myself or Miss Kelly, by Celebration Sunday. So Kid Camp ends on Friday. Celebration Sunday is two sleeps later. Yeah, that's right. And <laughs> Friday, <laughs> Saturday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Saturday. Saturday. Yep. So make sure that you have those letters in at the latest by Sunday morning. And make sure, uh, do we have that on here? We do not. Make sure, if at all possible, you attend on Sunday morning as well. So what we do on Sunday morning, for those of you that are new that haven't done this before, we feed our community and our kid campers um, hot dog lunch and ice cream sundaes on Sunday. Uh, kid camp, we call it Kid Camp Sunday. So the parents get to come. They get to learn what their kids learned all week. They get to see their kids doing the actions to the songs. They get to participate in all that kind of stuff. And then we feed them. And um, so please, if at all possible, make sure that you can be here that morning and wear your leader shirts. And um, it just adds to the celebration aspect yeah. of it. Yeah. Uh, okay. So uh, we might, we may be handing you an evaluation sheet as well. So our leaders, not our, our youth leaders won't get one, but our group, grade group leaders, our station leaders will all get an evaluation form. If you can fill that out as well, because that feedback always helps us to tweak things and make things better for the next year. And of course, pray. Yes. Please pray. Yes. This is our last sheet. Here we go. Ta -da. Expectations from 10 to 1. <laughs> okay. Sure. Please share and record your God moments. I don't know if you know what that means, but I'll explain it to you. A God moment is when you see God highlights that moment for you and you see Jesus in that moment. So whether, whether a miracle happened where a child just, Jesus just finally clicked in their brain and they figured it out, or you saw them being kind to another child, whatever it is that that God moment just kind of was uh, highlighted in your brain, please write those down because those are encouraging moments. And we love to share those kind of moments with the congregation and it encourages us as leaders and it will encourage you. So we want to, for number nine, 
Uh, we would love for you to communicate to us any problems or concerns you're experiencing as soon as possible. You do not have to wait to the end of day. If you have a moment at snack time or whatever, and you can run to the office and say, I'm really having a problem with X, Y, or Z, we will do our best to rectify it as soon as we possibly can, depending on the enormity of <laughs> said situation. It might take us till the next day. Uh, we'll yes. do our best. Uh, and along that line dovetailing, ask for help. Please ask for help. Don't, uh, don't endure the whole morning struggling. Uh, come to us and we will find a way together. Um, there's a reason this is in all caps. Yeah. Be prepared. So, uh, oh, I don't have that. Sorry, I don't have that. Mimi. Mimi. Are we oh. frozen? It's Are we tech frozen? people. Tech people. Oh, no, it is there. It's there. It's there? Be prepared. Number seven. Be prepared. Why is there two of them? I don't get it. I don't know. Okay. Because. Okay. okay. So be prepared. That means come smelling fresh like a daisy. That means come having eaten your breakfast. That means come uh, with your uh, whatever crazy hair or backwards day or silly sunglasses. That means come prayed up. So take some time. <laughs> I'm invisible. Take some time in the morning to pray over the kids, to pray over kid camp, to pray over the leaders, to pray for yourself. Because I know that I need to pray for God's wisdom every single moment of kid camp. And I need to pray for compassion and grace. And I need to pray for a lot of things because it doesn't come naturally to me. God needs to give it to me, for the, <laughs> especially for the week of kid camp. Did I spell model right? I don't think I did. Yeah, you did. That's right. Okay. Model positive behavior and a positive attitude to your youth helpers youth leaders and to the campers. So we're going to pass it all the way down. We are going to model po positive behavior. You're going to model positive behavior. Our youth helpers are going to model positive behavior. And therefore, our campers will see and act with positive behavior. Yes. So youth or helpers else. in that vein, youth helpers, we need you to actually be helpers. So if you've never done this before and you're not sure what to do, I encourage you to ask your leader, what would you like me to do? Because if you're busy playing the games with the kids instead of teaching the kids how to play the games or um, steering the kids in the right direction or even saying, you know what, I, instead of doing that, I need you to do this and being a helper, um, then that's not the role modeling that we would like to do, right? So... Yes, uh, youth helpers, make sure you are being helpful. We want you as youth helpers, as leaders, I don't care where you are, uh, volunteering. We would love for you to engage with the kids all morning at every station. Yes, buddy. Yes, can you? Yeah. yeah. <clears throat> That means doing the actions to the songs, but not like this. Right? You're going to actually like do the actions to the songs. We want you to be encouraging. We want you to be positive. We want you to be upbeat because your uh, attitude, your, um, what's the word I'm looking for? How you present yourself, basically, your kids are going to take cues from that, right? So if you're just like, another song, great. Oh, there's that lady talking on stage again. That's wonderful. Blah, blah, blah. That's what your kids are going to do. Okay? I know you're saying That's that That's what your kids are going to do. So. <laughs> wah, 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 wah. This is not Charlie Brown. Yeah. So make sure that you are really engaged in a positive way, in a way that engages your kids and wants... We want your kids to be excited. So the more excited you are and the more excited you act, the more excited they are. 
And engaging also means like at every station, talk to them on the way yeah. to the station. Talk to them to the next station. Yeah. Get to just, know your kids. Yeah, just ask questions, let them fill in the blanks, and um, then they know they will, from that alone, they will know that you are interested in them. It's really important. Yeah. Understand your role um, is essential and it has an internal impact. I want you guys to, to know here that what you're doing is very important. Sometimes we can, we can um, let it, what's the word? We can give off the idea that we're just filling holes. And that's not true. Yes, we struggle to have every position filled, but it, is, it has eternal impact and it is extremely important that you guys are here and serving for Kid Camp. You guys are doing an amazing job. It's a really important job and you're doing it on your own time and we really appreciate it. But I want you to know, you're not a whole filler. You are a kid camp worker and you are doing God's work, Kid Camp Week. Yep. And we appreciate it. Um, again, pray. pray, pray for yourself. It's so important because it changes your whole day. If you start your day off with prayer, especially during Kid Camp Week, where we know there's going to be challenges, but we know that there's also going to be amazing moments. If you start your day off with prayer for Kid Camp at home, I don't care if you pray in the shower while you're getting dressed, brushing your teeth, whatever. Just make the time to pray. And then we're going to pray again when we get here. There's a lot of prayer involved in Kid Camp, by the way. So <laughs> we just need and want your week to be successful and for you to have uh, the best week possible, despite the fact that we know that there's going to be challenges that week. And then uh, tagging on that, we're gonna, yeah. we want you to pray for the kids that you're going to be coming in contact with. Pray for your campers in your group, whether you know them yet or not, pray for them now and pray for their families. Yeah. Um, we, we don't just impact the kids that come through the doors. We don't. It's not just about them. It's about their families. And um, they will get to know Jesus through their kids' experience here. So pray that their eyes would be open, that they would be receptive to God, and that maybe somewhere down the line this year, the whole family starts coming together because of their kid coming to kid camp. Uh, it's not in there, but the Sunday before kid camp on the 20th, we would love for as many of you as, as is volunteering for kid camp to be in the service that morning because we would love to pray over you as well, just kind of to send you off with prayer. Um, and the last one, <laughs> because it's so important every day, please be on time. What time are you supposed to be here? <laughs> Some of you are 8 o'clock. 8.15, you should be here in the building. 8.30 is less touch base. Here I heard three different times when you said, what time do we have to be yeah, here? Yeah, that's right. Three different times. Are you really going to get mad at me if I show up 15 minutes early, Kelly? Early? Yeah, we show up like 8. So like... I will not be mad if you arrive early. I'll be here at 7. If, if you arrive at 7, we will put you to work. Oh, yes, I will. Oh, I'll be here at 6. Asleep in my truck. <laughs> so, again, what time are we getting here? Nursery, office, registration, 8 o'clock. 8 a.m. Everyone else. Everyone else? 8.15. What time are we meeting in the sanctuary after your kids have been signed in? You've gone pee. You've gone to the conference room to get all your stuff. You're completely ready to go. 8.30. Perfect. Yes. We're done. Let's pray. Woo. Oh. Uh, yes, we do have to answer questions. Can I Thank pray you. first, Sarah? Yes, Sarah. Okay. Let me pray first and then we'll answer questions. <laughs> Jesus, we're so thankful, again, that we have an opportunity to um, provide Kid Camp to our community. Thank you that we're still able to do it, and you've been giving us the resources to do it all these years. Thank you for each one that have come tonight and that are going to be coming at Kid Camp to serve, to, um, to help, and to make Kid Camp wonderful. We pray, Jesus, that the power of your Holy Spirit would go before us to do a mighty work 
in the hearts of children of this community, of the families of this community, and in, in our hearts as well. And we pray, dear Jesus, as well, that you would bring unity among us all, that we would work with one heart and one mind, that we would work well together and we would be able to conquer any um, struggles or obstructions that come our way. And now we pray a blessing over each one that's come. Help us to, um, well, just keep us safe as we go home. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Okay, any questions? Okay, so here's how the questions are going to work. Because we're videoing this for those that can't be here to watch it. or to, <laughs> That doesn't make sense. For those that can't be here, we're videoing it so they can watch it later. They won't hear your questions. They'll only hear the answers and they'll be lost. So we are going to repeat your questions into the microphone so that... Or Kelly will get you to ask your question into the microphone. And we'll go from there. Okay. Put, put your hand up. Make them come up. <laughs> so are the, are the youth leaders just in for like, we're standby making sure everyone's kind of in single foot, like what in order. And then the grade leaders are the one that's doing the main gathering and stuff. Okay. Good so are, are you, are you with elementary or are you with four fives and sixes? Okay. Okay. So if you don't know where you are yet, come and see me after and we'll, I'll let you know. So what's going to happen as the kids are coming into the sanctuary that have been signed in, you as youth helpers are going to be waiting, but not in front of the door so nobody can pass you. You're going to be waiting at the side of the door and taking kids in because some parents will be like, nope, dropping off. Don't need to be here. See you later. Have fun. So you're going to bring those kids into their leader. All the kids have a red shirt for kindergarten, a blue shirt for grade one, and so on. You will know exactly where to bring those kids. When you bring those kids to those groups, I want you to visually see who the leaders are because they'll have black leader shirts. Bring that child to the leader and say, here you are. You have another child in your group. Then when that's done, you're going to go back to the door and wait for more children to come in so that you can escort more children in. Olivia, I think you're on registration, so you will not be doing that. But then after registration, I have you somewhere else. So um, does that answer youth questions? Give me one second, Sarah. We're, yeah, Mrs. Kozak's going to give you the microphone. Uh, when will we be getting the t-shirts? I'm going to give you guys t-shirts tonight. If you do not already have a Kid Camp t-shirt, no, you're you going to get, get a, a new one. You, Kid you Camp shirt ones. tonight. Now, just so you know, so I don't have to say it a thousand times when I'm giving out the t-shirts, they are 100% cotton. They are going to shrink. If you do not want your t-shirt to shrink, do not put it in the dryer. Wash and cold, hang to dry. So that means you need to be proactive in doing your laundry the week of kid camp and you cannot wash it the morning of or you will be coming in a wet shirt. Okay. Hey, anyone else? <laughs> Sarah and then Emily. You have a shirt. Um, are you requiring the children that have fanny packs to wear them at all times? All times, if it, if it is during the week of, or during the hours of kid camp, including kid camp volunteer lunch. Um, no, that doesn't make sense because they're going to take off their fanny packs at dismissal. Okay. Uh, the only thing is, is that uh, wearing their fanny packs when they're running and playing games might be a little unsafe. Well, it's like running with a scissors. Can we make sure that they're <laughs> snug? Like not I don't know, I'm just thinking if that's snug. If that if that cap pops off it has a lid on and it. And they John. get stabbed. <laughs> Say that again? If that cap pops off and they get stabbed while they're running. Mm. That's the only concern mm. that I'm thinking. That's the only thing I'm thinking is that might be a safety issue. Okay. If they're running with their EpiPen. Let's test it. <laughs> <laughs> Not with an EpiPen, you dork. You, you first, Sarah. <laughs> Let's test it. Okay. Let's put... We will, we, will, we will discuss that, and we will talk to you on Monday about it. Next question. Uh, in the office, you said if a parent drops off the tag with them, with me, 
Uh, do I have to ask for that parent, since I, if I don't know them, do I ask for their ID before I give them their tag? Yes, and then you have to also look at the registration yep. form for that child to make sure that that person who's picking up the tags is actually on the pickup list. Yep. Okay, perfect. Yeah. Um, if I'm in the office with registration and nursery, do they have to also be in here at 830 or do they just stay out there and do nope. their jobs? Nope, so office, registration and nursery will meet with me in the nursery at about 805, 807. We'll have our let's four. touch base and then you go to your respective corners, corners, positions and do your thing. And then I will come in here for 830 for the big general let's touch base. Okay, now if those, this is the second part to that question, registration, nursery, well, nursery. Yeah, registration, nursery, and office, if they have kids, are we leaving them here early or are we taking them with us where we have to go? You will bring them with you where they have to go and because they, they won't they be signed in. in yet. Okay, and then they come in at 8.30. Yeah. Okay, that's my question. Okay. Okay, so we have Emily, we have Dawn. Okay, I'll make my way. Okay, um, you s said that they were going to have the fanny packs and they were going to be left. Are the contents going home with them? Yes. Okay. Contents yes. are going home. They're just carrying it with them at kid camp. Yeah. So it's their responsibility, the family's responsibility to bring the medication back. Yeah, for sure. Who's next? Miss Emily. Hi. <laughs> Hi, my name is Emily. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Shh. okay, okay, stop. I have a question. So, we have the snacks for like kindergarten to grade six. What are we doing for nursery? Uh, the snack team will bring in a plate of snacks for nursery. Yeah, yes. Oh, that's a question. Uh, for the toilet paper, have you considered doing a grade war? A grade war? Yeah, I have a mm. rocket ship for each grade. A rocket ship Ooh, for each grade. Oh, idea. that would be fun. Yeah. I like that. Yeah. They creative. might have to be smaller rocket ships than our one ginormous rocket oh. ship, but that could be cool. That's a good yeah. idea. Anyone else? Anyone else? You have a real question? Yeah. I don't believe you. Well, you have, you have, okay, well, what is it? What's the question? Okay. All right. Uh, I think that's it. So now the next thing you're going to do is if you're a first time helper worker, um, you can meet us in the conference room to get your leader shirt. And uh, Miss Rochelle, if she's still here, if she hasn't gotten paperwork from you, she's going to headhunt you. Yeah, give, yes. give, give her all the paperwork. Olivia, okay. what's your question? For like name tags, are we going to be getting like lanyards or like clippings? Uh, we have lanyards, but I think they also may have a clip on them. So um. for the most part, I think you're going to have lanyards. If a lanyard is a problem for a specific individual, because that's what we have most of is lanyards. So we'll, we'll use those. But if a lanyard is a problem for a specific individual, we can give you a clip and you can clip it, but it has to be somewhere visible. It can't be tucked under something. It can't be under a hoodie. Uh, because, as, <laughs> stick it on your forehead, as we talked about before, we're going to have open eyes and we're going to be looking for people that do not have name tags. So we need your name tags to be visible at all times, okay? How can I listen to the music beforehand? So you can probably find the music on Spotify uh, or Apple Music. Or, or if you just go on to Group Canada's website and look for the Stellar VBS, they will have the songs there. And you should be able to, I don't think you can download them because you wouldn't have paid for them, but you should be able to listen to them. Michelle, you can, I'll give you, I'll give you a, a CD. Oh, and YouTube. YouTube. YouTube might have it too. Because there'll be other churches that have already done their VBSs and um, there may be posts and whatnot out there. That's it. That's it. Thank you, everyone. Yes. If you need, if you need a CD, because we didn't do digital music this year, based on feedback from last year, if you need a CD because you don't have access to uh, YouTube or um, Spotify or whatever, come and see us. We'll make sure you get a CD. Thank you, everyone.
Marcus, Red Marcus, are you talking?